it really is a lot about respect, you know. You treat them the way you want to be treated, you know. It's, they're great little ladies. When Rick Nessler arrives at Distillery Lane Cider Works in Jefferson, Maryland, he makes a bee line for one of his 12 colonies. He's been raising bees all his life, and for him, there's nothing better than an active hive. I can sit there and drink the coffee in the morning and see the pollens coming back and this, you know, turn my hearing aid up and I can hear the buzzing. I think they're just amazing, you know, it's such intelligent insects. And with over 10 acres of apple trees in bloom, Rick's bees are pretty happy. Yeah, it's just a wonderful day to be a bee. You can see the fluids in there. They've already started to gather the uh, nectar from the apple blossoms. Orchard owner Rob Miller produces over 20,000 gallons of fresh apple cider on the farm each year, and he hires Rick to provide his most valuable resource, the bees. None of this happens without the bees. The honeybee is absolutely essential. And most of the apples in the orchard are considered um, sterile or they're, they're not self-pollinating. Um, and a lot of them need the pollen from at least two other varieties before that's going to make into an apple. With a dozen colonies, Rob estimates there are more than 200,000 bees buzzing around his farm. How long do you think the girls will stay around here? I'd say at least three weeks. Three more weeks. Yeah, as okay. long as you can spare them. Honeybees are nature's most efficient pollinators. Without them, many varieties of plants and trees could not produce fruit. They account for one third of all the food we eat. Everything from soybeans to cucumbers to watermelons needs bees to grow. But there's a problem. The honeybee is under siege. A combination of pesticides, parasites, bacteria, and environmental factors are wiping out bee colonies at an alarming rate. I lose so many hives. So yeah, the cold, the, uh, the parasites. Going into winter, you have a, a, a huge colony that looks probably like this. And then the queen is going to start recognizing that no more flowers, no more nectar, no more foods coming back in. So then she shuts down her egg laying sites. But when the queen stops laying eggs, then the parasites start to win. It's called colony collapse disorder, and it's a serious threat to our food supply. So serious, in fact, that Maryland has a four-legged employee whose job is to detect American foul brood, a type of bacteria commonly associated with colony collapse disorder. Meet Clinker, a seven-year-old black lab with a nose for nuisances. She and her handler, Bill Trop, are experts at finding hives in trouble. So the dog can, can go into a yard of, say, 100 colonies of bees, and she can inspect those with her nose during the winter months in five, five minutes where it would take one person to open hive inspect those. It might take us as much as five to eight hours to do all those bees. Clinker plays it safe, only working in the winter when bee colonies aren't active. We're finished with this bee yard. Are you ready to go to another one? Did I mention she really loves her job? It's play to her, it isn't work. It's just all play, it's all fun and dogs just love to play, uh, labs like to uh, retrieve and they'll just, they'll play all day long. Even though this is just practice, when she finds a hive with the scent of the bacteria, Clinker is all business. That's important to farmers like Rob, whose livelihood depends on healthy hives. Each year in Maryland, over $40 million in produce needs to be pollinated by bees. But there are only half the active colonies that there were 30 years ago. That's why beekeepers like Rick are a farmer's best friend. It's also why understanding bees is so important. I mean, this is pretty incredible. This is, this is a nice hive, 50,000 bees, and you would think that one of them would sting us. I'm gonna use this and just take my time. You don't wanna go into a hive in a bad mood. They can sense nervousness, because um, yeah, there's pheromones in here. Pheromones also help the bees get back to the colony. The pheromone of the queen, they recognize it. Um, and now when I take the hives out of the orchard, I gotta go past five miles because they will come back to the home that they're familiar to. By reaching out to the public, Rick hopes that more folks will support local farms and in turn, local bees. And he does everything he can to help young people take an interest in keeping bees. The kids, they extract the honey, they spin the honey, and they eat the honey, and they just have a great time. You know, if we can get some more beekeepers out of those kids. 
Go ahead and dig in there and see what you think. Oh, oh yeah. Good. Rick's hopeful that as people understand the importance of bees, their numbers will begin to increase. He says people should buy local honey and be careful with insecticides. And as long as there are crops that need pollination, Rick's certain he'll be as busy as a bee.